Okay, this is an excerpt. Uh, a man and a woman uh, are talking in Cleveland. Uh, they are emigrants from Bosnia, and uh, it's from a woman's point of view. Uh, so I know my voice doesn't sound particularly feminine, but uh, you can imagine a woman who has smoked a lot of cigarettes. <laughs> so it might work. <clears throat> okay, mellow out. Have a beer. Good idea, uh, he replied. Two Guinnesses, please. He turned his head, uh, and uh, the waitress wore a short skirt and black stockings and went only a few inches above her knees, so there was a stretch of thighs between the hem of the skirt and the stockings. Good body, I said. Uh, Guinness has a, a lot of body. <laughs> she has a good body. Uh, you noticed, uh, he said. I noticed you noticing. Oh, here we go again. You're catching me at something? Uh, no. I forgot how difficult our women can be. Now I feel right at home. Same goes for me and our men. That's the point. I wanted to feel like I was home. And that's why you agreed to come out with me? Yes. It doesn't matter what I'm like. Uh, the main thing is I'm from there. The beer was foamy and cool and uh, left a creamy edge on his lips, which he never wiped off, but talked like that, uh, with the foam on his upper lip. The second round of ale got to my head. The, the American bars are dark. We kissed in the darkness under the spell of dark ale or under the excuse of it. He tasted of unfiltered cigarettes, and I liked that. It reminded me of home. Yes, I had kissed a few Americans, and non-smoking immigrants, who before the kiss regularly chewed mints. So their mouths were cool, slightly antiseptic. Well, the three, four times I had kissed, uh, they went to the bathroom to floss their teeth, no doubt, and to brush them, so you'd have uh, a refurbished mouth. But this was a European kiss, old style, with the nicotine bite to it, and an undertone of hot peppers, he must have had feferonki somewhere. The kiss was hotly reminiscent of the old continent, so I closed my eyes and floated into the smoky spaces with Turkish coffee poured from Jezva, coppery vessels, and heavy dregs on the bottom from which all the peasant women read fortunes. Upon drinking a cup, you'd have a few coffee grains left in your mouth to chew on, to chase around your mouth with your tongue, and that is what the kiss now felt like a grainy chase, a gritty and biting kiss. I stretched my neck and he kissed it, his five o'clock whiskers scratching me like a rasping paper, raw, but I like the sensation of hurt. We went to my home and continued our erotic pursuits so impatiently that we had not fully undressed. I still had my skirt on and he had his shirt and tie, though everything else was off. I wondered why this man trusted me and let me pull uh, the tie. I felt a sudden impulse to strangle him. Inexplicable, but tempting. <laughs> okay, we have uh, enough space for one more page. Uh, so this will be a sort of a sociolog uh, sociology of the uh, New York uh, subway. Uh, you know, I spent a lot of time here in the tube, and so I, I'm kind of uh, happy about those dividers. Uh, um, so this, this is a little bit of, anyway, this 57th Street. An old man lay on the floor of the sub-mezzanine. One of his legs was dangling down the stairs, the other stretched out in front, culminating in an old hiking boot whose sole was detached so that his filthy toes with curling blue nails protruded. His beard was gray-brown, so was his hair, so was his clothes, so was his grimy, unwashed skin. But his penis, which he was stroking slowly, was all white pink and gleaming. The only part of him that looked young and clean. <laughs> when he noticed me, he slowly packed away his penis and coiled his body sideways. Who knows from where he drew his impressions, inspiration. There must have been a mind in there to form images. So, or maybe he did not need images. And uh, in the subway. But this is not the real macho game played on the subways. 
the really macho guys sit with their legs spread wide apart. The wider you spread, the more of an alpha male you are. You're making a statement. I don't give a shit about your ass. I'm going to claim my space. I don't give a shit if you rub your leg against mine. I'm not a homophobe. That's your deal, not mine. I'm a real man and I have my space. And nothing, I mean nothing, will move me. You can rub your leg against mine if you dare, but I bet you won't. Because you aren't as tough as I am. Usually a guy who spreads his legs also lets his eyelids droop and leans his shoulders back in his seat. That morning, though I resorted to a shoulder squash, I was not going to rub legs with those guys, so I crossed mine in a retreat of sorts. Although now my foot was sticking too far out into the crowd, threatening to trip anybody passing by. But that was fine. This would be my form of rudeness. When I crossed my legs, uh, the guys set up even straighter in psychological and sexual triumph. They were alphas and I re revealed myself as a better, simply by being squeamish. Squeamishness is a better quality. Tough guys don't mind touching legs. They don't squirm. I sat between them like an intellectual who does not have much use for his body. Not a prime male fucker who's proud to display his balls and now and then slides his pelvis forward with pride. The balls have to swell, spread, Pop merrily out into the world. Okay, cheers. <laughs>